Amen. Amen. Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to Jesus. I invite and I welcome everybody who is listening to this sermon at this time. And I want to tell you that God loves you. My name is Pastor John Gaho of Blessings Revival Center Church in the county of Kiambu, a place known as Kegumo. When you come to Kegumo town in Kiambu, you find a church by the name Blessings Revival Center. And also online, you can find me, Pastor John Gaho, on Facebook, on YouTube. You can find me, Pastor John Gaho, on LinkedIn. You can also find me, Pastor John Gaho. I want to share a word of God with you today. And I believe that by the end of this sermon, you'll be a blessed person. You'll be a person who is at another level. And I kindly request you that you share this sermon with as many people as possible so that other people can be blessed. Let us pray pray so that we can start the sermon of today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you. I thank you, Jesus, because you're great and great because you're wonderful. Thank you, Father, because you've been together with each and every person throughout the places that we've been going, oh God. Thank you, Father, because you've been our protector throughout, oh Jesus. We worship you and we give you glory. Father, at this moment that we are coming before you to share your sermon with one of us, oh God, we thank you because we know the Lord Jesus, you have something good that you've prepared for each and every heart. Thank you, Father, because of I is your servant, O Jesus. I know the Lord Jesus, you have a message that you're going to give me to give to your people. I worship you and I glorify you because I know the Lord Jesus, your spirit is going to be together with me from the beginning to the end of this service. In the name of Jesus, I thank you and I glorify you. Thank you, Father, because I know somebody is going to listen and to hear from you. A life of somebody is going to change from now. In the name of Jesus, I worship you and I give you glory. In Jesus' name, we do pray trusting and believing amen amen god bless you god bless you wherever you are for today i want us to learn something very 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 uh, detailed and today i want us to learn about how to build a personal altar unto the lord how to build a personal altar unto the lord if you can open your bible in uh, second samuel chapter 24 and verse 25 second samuel chapter 24 and verse 25 remember our topic today is how to build a personal altar unto the Lord. And I tell you, my friend, I tell you, building an altar or an altar is what speaks to you. An altar is what speaks blessings or curses unto somebody's life. And therefore today, I want to tell you on how to go about building your personal altar unto your God or unto our God. And in Second Samuel chapter 24 and verse 25, the Bible says that David built an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. David built an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. In the law, and the Lord answered the prayers on behalf of the land and the plague upon Israel was halted. That is one person of whom we say that out of his generation, Jesus Christ came. This is David. And the Bible is saying that David made sure that he built an altar for God. And on this altar, this is where he offered burnt offerings and also peace offerings. This is where David offered offerings in short. And at the time that he was offering, giving offerings on this altar, the Bible is saying that the Lord answered his prayers on behalf of the land, on the behalf of the people of Israel. And when David's uh, uh, prayers was, were being answered, there was a plague that was disturbing Israelites. And this plague was halted or was stopped by God through the act that was done by David. Remember, the Bible has said that David made an altar. David built an altar for the Lord. And on this altar, he made burnt offerings. He offered burnt offerings to God. He offered peace offerings to God. And through these offerings on the altar, the prayers of David were answered on behalf of this land. And every plague that was disturbing Israelites, every plague that was disturbing people of this land, it was halted. It was stopped by God. And that is why today I have come so that I can tell you on how to go about building a personal altar unto the Lord. On how you can go about making or building your personal altar 
unto the Lord. I want to tell you that an altar can simply mean a place of sacrifice, a place of worship, or a place of consecration. Also, an altar can mean a meeting point between human and spirit beings, a place where covenants are cut and vows are made. Oh, hallelujah. I repeat unto you, an altar is either a place where you can go and do sacrifice a place where you can go and worship your god or a place where you can do go and do consecration also an altar if i can tell you or if i can give you another definition is that an altar is a place where people meet that is where human beings meet together with the spirit beings it's a place where covenants are made it's a place where vows are made also you can say that an altar is a gate into the spirit world to make way for angelic traffic this is a spiritual highway for angelic or demonic demonic traffic for this reason when men on earth raise a righteous altar unto the lord it becomes a gateway to heaven in this one you can be able to get it in genesis chapter 28 and verse 18 also if i can give you another meaning of an altar you can call it a place that can either attract blessings or curses in short an altar is a place where you can go and after you get out of that place you can come out with a blessing or a curse and depending on the spirit that i invoked to consume the sacrifice on an altar god will never despise the essence that comes to him from a righteous altar depending on the sacrifice that is placed on an altar that is what defines whether an altar is going to release blessings or an altar is going to release uh, uh curses if you read in exodus 20 verse 24 and verse 25 you'll be able to have uh, uh, these all this that an altar can be able to release for you blessings or curses read exodus chapter 20 verse 24 and verse 25 the bible uh, is also talking about an altar releasing blessings and curses in uh, psalms 24 verse 3 uh, to 6 and it says that god gives a good description of those who can ascend into the hill of the lord the bible says in psalms 24 verse 3 to 6 that god gives a good description of those people who can ascend who can climb the hill of the lord the hill of the lord is what is being referred here as an altar and it is not anybody who can climb onto this hill because whomever climbs into this hill whatever he is going to do the type of sacrifice that is going to place on this altar is the one that is going to either release blessings or release curses unto people that is all what it means by an altar if you want to know how an altar uh, looks or what an altar possesses an altar has power to bless or curse that is one thing that is one characteristics of a curse an altar has power to bless or curse and this if you want to get what uh all, all about blessings and uh, and curses about an altar you can get it in numbers 23 numbers chapter 23 from verse 1 you read up to verse 30 and this is where you're going to get the meaning of of, of an altar blessing or cursing and altars can do speak for generations in uh, in genesis chapter 28 verse 11 to verse 28 if an altar speaks curses this curse is going to move from one generation to another generation to another generation to another generation that is up to fourth generation if an altar speaks blessings unto a generation this blessing is going to move from one generation to another generation also another characteristic of an altar another thing that an altar possesses is that altars stand as a memorial for those who raise them whomever raises an altar this shall stand as a memorial thing it shall start it shall stand as a memorial thing even the descendants of godly men who raised righteous altars are blessed by reason of god's covenant relationship with their ancestors this one you can be able to see it in genesis chapter 17 verse 15 to 21 still if you read in genesis chapter 22 verse 15 
uh, to verse 18, you'll be able to get that meaning that an altar can also stand as a memorial for those who raise them. And this one is going to show you that even those people who are born by godly men who raise righteous altars, for example, the descendants of Abraham, the descendants of David, all those descendants were blessed by a reason that God uh, received or God's altar was raised by their forefathers. Also, an altar can possess something else. An altar can have this characteristic that praise and worship presented from a holy and sanctified actor represents sweet incense that God cannot reject. This is something that an altar must possess. That whatever praise is given on an altar, whatever worship is presented on, a, on an altar, whatever praise or worship is presented on an altar, it is going to represent a sweet incense sense that God cannot reject anything that is done on an altar it can never be rejected by God that is another characteristic that an altar possesses another characteristic that an altar possesses that to make progress you must destroy the old and its priesthood see judges chapter 6 verse 25 to verse that one to obtain the inheritance the lord has given to us we must deal with the old altars in our families we must deal with the old altars in our communities we must deal with the old altars in our cities and also in our countries that were raised unto Satan. Gideon this, did this unto his nation and Gideon made sure that he destroyed the altar that was raised to the devil by his forefathers. And the Bible says that Gideon did this and the Lord brought him into his destiny as a mighty man of valor. This is in Genesis chapter 6 verse 11 to verse 32. We see Gideon destroying all the altars that were raised to the Satan, that were raised to the demon. And when he did this, God uplifted him and God made sure that Gideon became a mighty man of valor. Another characteristic that you will see when it comes to an altar, if you raise an altar today, there's something that you're going to see out of an altar. And this thing is that you can obtain open heavens by servicing your altar with sweet essence and servicing your altar with sweet essence these are things of praising god on the altar spray uh, worshiping god on the altar and all these offerings you have to do them if you give an offering of praise on the altar you have to give an offering of praise on the altar in a righteous way if you give an offering of worship on the altar you have to give it in a righteous way and altars open on unseen doors in the realm of the spirit these are the highways of angelic uh, traffic as gates altars attract spiritual traffic depending on who built them once spiritual highways are opened they can neither become the gates of hell they can either become the gate of hell or the gate of heaven this one you can be able to see it in genesis chapter 28 from verse 12 to verse 16 that is when you give uh, 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 when you give sacrifices of worship in a righteous way when you give sacrifices of worship in a righteous way on a, a, on an altar this one becomes a gate and a gate this gate can be a gate of hell also it can be a gate of heaven when i'm talking about a gate of hell, what do i mean i mean when you give a sacrifice of worship a sacrifice of praise in a righteous way this one can act as a way of opening blessings for you still if you give a sacrifice of worship if you give a sacrifice of praise on the altar but in an righteous way this one is not going to release these blessings unto your life it is going to release curses unto your life oh my god oh my god praise god praise god wherever you are that is all about the altars and the sixth thing that i'm going to tell you about altars is that one of the most important things that we must do is to build altars of righteousness in our location so that the holy spirit can either through these gates to uh, can either enter through these gates to change the face of the earth wherever you are be it in your house be it in your office make sure that you raise an altar at that 
place. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. As you continue thinking of how to raise an altar for yourself. Remember, I have told you that an altar can either release a blessing or an altar can release a curse unto your life. Do you have an altar? that is going to speak on your behalf do you have an altar in your life that is going to either release blessings for you do you have an altar in your life that is good for you that is going to release blessings for you if you don't have a good altar it is going to release curses to your life now you are asking me pastor how do you go about building an altar unto the Lord. And the first thing that you have to do, you have to destroy old altars and repent over all bad things that you have been doing. The first thing that you have to do when you want to build an altar for God, the first thing that you have to do is to destroy all old altars, all altars that are not godly. Make sure that all altars that are not godly in your life, they are destroyed. Maybe the altars that were created by your forefathers, they are altars of beer. Maybe your fathers poured beer. Maybe your fathers, uh, forefathers poured alcohol and they created a bad altar. An altar that has been making people in your family to become alcoholic. You have to destroy these altars. For you to make an altar for God, you have to destroy all bad altars that has been raised by your fathers, that has been raised by your forefathers. Oh my God. The second thing that you have to do is you have to stand as a priest or a king and plead for mercy. Identify yourself as a king and a priest of God. You have to see this in Revelation chapter 5 uh, uh, and verse 10. When you are presenting, when you want to make an altar, you have to see yourself as a king. You have to see yourself as a as a priest and plead for mercy request god to forgive you request god to forgive you request god to how to give you mercy and once you do this you are in a good position to make an altar for god finally when you want to make an altar for god when you want to make an altar for god you must address the deity in the name of jesus christ calling it by name after taking a that repentance of sin committed we have to break down evil altars and address existing altars which hinder us using the name of jesus christ of nazareth address with the word of god the deity which was enthroned and throw down any existing altars calling them directly by name any altar that was raised in your life any altar that was raised in your family you have to bring it down if it is the altar of alcohol you have to bring it down you have to tell it the altar of alcohol in the name of jesus i destroy you the altar of prostitution in our family i bring you down in the name of jesus you have to bring all these deities down with the help and with the use of the name of jesus christ oh my god building an altar for god do you have an altar that is speaking on your, that is speaking on your behalf if you don't have an altar that is speaking on your behalf you have to make sure that you raise an altar for you oh my god another thing that you have to do my brother and my sister when you're building an altar renounce every existing agreement between Satan and those who built that answer. Renounce every token, every dedication, every vow or promise made to that God. Renounce any binding ones spoken and deliberately reverse any which may have been placed as injunctions or sanctions against those who refuse to worship these idols in the name of Jesus. Renounce every existing agreement, any agreement that was done between your forefathers and the ungodly altars you have to renounce it you have to renounce it anything that was say you have to renounce it in the name of jesus you have to renounce it remember we are raising an altar an altar is going to be releasing blessings unto your life in the name of jesus something else that you have to do burn the tokens of the covenant everything about the old altars has to be brought out and burnt to 
ashes if there is something that was given to your grandmother if there was something that was given to your grandfather you have to remove it you have to get it out of your household you have to get it out of your family and burn it if there is something that you are given by your grandmother if there is something that you are given by your grandfather and you are told when you are doing one two three be using this gadget you have to remove that gadget and burn it to ashes in the name of Jesus before you make sure that you build an altar for God you have to remove every token of covenant that was given to your forefather and burn it to ashes in the name of Jesus something else that you have to do change the whole creation of the beer witness to what you are doing when they entered into this evil covenant our ancestors would invite creation to take note of their deeds the rivers the mountains suns moon and stars were called to witness the enactment of ordinances therefore you must also address them to bear witness to your act of reversing to those covenants every word must be renounced reversed and nullified this is how to render those words powerless and make them no effect change the hope of creation to bear witness speak to the stars speak to the clouds speak to the moon speak to the sun speak to the tallest mountains tell them i am renouncing every altar that was done before you i renounce it in my life i renounce it in our family in the name of jesus let them witness it let them witness your renouncement in the name of jesus Re- renounce everything in front of all the creation and let them be your witness let the highest mountain witness that you are with, uh, renouncing that altar let the stars we are witness that you have renounced the altar of ungodliness that were done by your forefathers in the name of jesus after you have done all those things you have one thing that is remaining raise a new altar to god once you have destroyed all the altars all demonic altars once you have finally renounced all the bad altars all the ungodly altars that are made by your forefathers you have one thing that is remaining you have to raise a new altar to god after all that you have done you must now raise a proper altar unto god to replace the altar that was broken down and destroyed in the mighty name of jesus you must raise a new altar a space should not be left vacant because the former spirit will become uh, i will come back to check whether the space is still available make sure that no space no gap is left between the old and the new altar the bible says in luke chapter 11 verse 24 that when bad demons when bad spirits are sent away they still come back to check whether there is a gap so when you renounce that bad altar when you renounce that ungodly altar make sure that you completely renounce everything make sure that you destroy all ungodly altars and after that make sure that there is no gap which is left and therefore raise an altar for god how do you raise an altar for god the first thing is that you have to locate a good spot and make it a place of worship and consecration get a special place be it in your office be it in your house you can raise altars anywhere but not everywhere you can raise an altar at your workplace you have that special place where you worship god you have that special place where you pray god in your house you raise an altar at that place hallow it by pouring anointing oil or water on it once you consecrate once you set that special place once you select that special place once you do that you have to hallow it you have to renew it with anointing oil with some water on it call upon the name of the lord and ask the three to bear record on earth and in heaven to take note that you are raising an altar to him on that area tell god tell jesus christ tell the holy spirit that you are raising an altar for god in that special place that you have selected at your work in that special place that you have selected in your office in that special place that you have selected in your house 
vows. Tell Jesus Christ that you're raising an altar. Tell God that you're raising an altar. Tell the Holy Spirit that you're raising an altar for God. And this one you're going to see it in Exodus chapter 34 and verse 10. And also in Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 5. Tell the Holy Spirit. Tell God who is in heaven. Tell Jesus Christ that you're raising an altar for him. Let the three understand. Let the three know that you're raising an altar. That you're raising a new altar. After destroying the old altar. If you have been employed. If you are newly employed. You have to understand that there were altars that were made in that particular office. That there were altars that were made in that particular company. And because you are a godly person. You have to break off. All those altars select a special place and make sure that you make a new you create a new altar and once you select that place you have to tell God you have to tell Jesus Christ you have to tell the Holy Spirit let them witness let them know that you're raising a new altar for God and finally you have to name the altar you have to give your altar name so that you'll be remembering that this is my altar. I give it this name in the name of Jesus. Last but not least, remember to mark your altar. God directed Israel to use 12 stones to Israel uh, 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 in Israel to raise a national altar. When Israelites raised an altar, God told them to select 12 stones and mark the territories of the altar. This is the same thing with you, my fellow Christians. Once you raise an altar, you have to set it apart. You have to mark it. You have to mark it. And that is why you come to church. You'll find that there is a special place in front. What we call an altar. This, that is an altar. Not everybody should get there. Not everybody should get there. Because that is a special place that has been selected. That is an altar that has been raised for God. Even you, even in your office, you have to mark your altar and let people understand that that is a special place. That is your place of prayer in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God do you wonders as you plan to raise an altar. God bless you as you plan to build an altar for God. God bless you as you plan to start destroying all old altars that are raised by your former 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 grandfather by your grandmother by your fathers by your mothers in the name of jesus once you raise an altar an altar has so many benefits in your life because when you raise an altar god calls on people to repair their altars and once you raise it once you repair your altar god wants to redeem and empower you to carry on to continue with the good work that he gave you to continue the good assignment that he gave unto you so once you raise an altar once you destroy old altars once you renew your altar maybe you had made you had built an altar last year once you renew that altar maybe you have come to a new place once you build a new altar God is there and he is ready to empower you to continue with the assignment that he has given unto you. And I remind you that when Elijah rebuilt the altar at Mount Carmel, this singular event caused ripples in the nations. According to 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 39, fire came down and fear came back to the house of God. When altars are repaired, my friend and my sister, God judges wickedness in the land and when the Spirit of God touches the earth, a new season begins. This is what happens in the days of Elijah when God visited the earth with rain after years of drought. See this in 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 40. What happened when Elijah built an altar? What happened? God brought rain after so many years. God made sure that people realized that there is a power that comes with an altar. God brought back rain after so many years. When Elijah prayed God on the altar, God made sure that the rain came. All the prophets of Baal were killed. Remember, when Elijah placed a godly altar, 
and he called unto God and he asked God God burn this burnt offering God brought fire and fire burned the offering and through this all prophets of Baal were killed up it is up to you to raise a godly altar and when you do that anybody who was trying to use witchcraft anybody who was trying to use the, the, the powers of the devil is going to be ashamed by the spirit of God in the name of Jesus it is up to you now my brother it is up to you now my sister to make sure that you raise a godly altar and once you raise a godly altar your life is not going to be the same again once you raise a godly altar your job is not going to be the same again once you raise a godly altar your family is not going to uh, to be the same again in the name of Jesus ask God to help you to remain focused pray that the holy spirit will come your friend once you raise an altar pray from Ezekiel 36 uh, uh, verse 11 that God will grant you help speedily and ask God to give you multiplication of your resources to do the work that he called you to do. Once you raise an altar, ask anything from God. Let the altar speak on your behalf and anything that you want good into your life, you will get it. There is no curse that is going to disturb you in the name of Jesus. Everything, every bad thing is going to stop in your life once you build an altar for God. And remember, not everybody can be able to raise an altar. Remember what I told you? You must take yourself as a priest. And if you don't have these capabilities, visit a man of God. And when you visit a man of God, request him to raise an altar for you. Request him to raise an altar for your family. And through this, every bad thing is going to move away. Every bad thing is going to stop. And your life is not going to be the same again. Your life is going to change. You are going to restart getting multiplication of things. You are going to start getting multiplication of resources in the name of Jesus. God bless you as you plan and you start thinking of how you're going to build an altar for God at your job, on how you're going to build an altar for God in your family, of how you're going to build an altar for your children in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you, I thank you because of my listener. Father Lord, you've told us about raising altars and about building altars, oh God. I know the Lord Jesus, you're going to help us and I know the Lord Jesus, my listener, you're going to help him or her to raise godly altars so that, Father, you can continue empowering him, so that, Father, you can continue blessing him in the name of Jesus. I pray the Lord Jesus that every altar that is going to be built by this person, I pray that it's going to get a lot of power. I pray that it's going to release a lot of blessings into his life, into her life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you've heard my prayer. Thank you, Father, because of my altar. Continue giving it more power. Continue releasing more power unto my altar. In the name of Jesus, I worship you and I glorify you. In the name of Jesus, we do pray, trusting and believing. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Remember, my name is Pastor John Gaho of Blessings Revival Center Church, Kigumo Kiambu. If you want to call me, you can call me using the number 0715-619-700. I repeat, 0715-619-700. God bless you. God do wonders. Shalom, shalom, shalom.